Horizons One is now departing. Our final destination today, the 21st century. Hey, that's some destination. My wife's right. Wait till you see the new towns of tomorrow. Desert farms and floating cities, even colonies in space. But you know, this isn't exactly the first time anyone's tried to make this trip. People have been dreaming about the future for centuries. Hello and welcome to Theme Park History, the channel for everything to do with theme parks, old and new, big and small. In today's episode, we step into the future with Epcot's Horizons, a dark ride attraction that opened at the park on October 1st, 1983, and closed on January 9th, 1999. This attraction was suggested by all these people who believe if they can dream it, then they can do it. So thank you to everyone for your comments. As always, if there's an attraction you would like us to cover in future videos, leave a comment down below. You never know, your suggestion might be next month's video. A spiritual sequel to the Magic Kingdom's Carousel of Pride Progress. Horizons is one of the most beloved, respected, and celebrated attractions ever created by Disney. As the only attraction at the park to feature an element of each of the future world pavilions, Horizons took guests from the present day and brought them into the 21st century, a time full of wonder and awe, with ambitious and amazing new ideas that showcase what life could be like in the future. Horizons is considered by many to be the greatest attraction ever built at Epcot, as it allowed guests to take the trip they've always dreamed of. The 21st century begins October 1, 1982. Epcot Center, Walt Disney World. For us to explore the history of Horizons, we need to first take a look at the origins of the experimental prototype community of tomorrow. In October 1966, Walt Disney created a film revealing its plans for what was known at the time as Disney World, better known today as the Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida. In the film, Walt revealed plans for a second Disneyland, which became Magic Kingdom, along with hotels, motels, monorails, and even its own Disney World Airport. While this would be a huge announcement in itself, it was only a small part of what Walt had in mind. At the heart of the project would be Epcot, an actual city where people would work and live. Epcot would be built upon emerging technologies, transportation systems, and new building materials. Walt's vision for a model community which would be home to 20,000 residents and a testbed for city planning, with the hope Epcot would redefine the layout, infrastructure, and style of American cities going forward. In order to secure the funding for Epcot, Walt Disney agreed to build Magic Kingdom first. Unfortunately, Walt passed away on December 6, 1966, five years before the opening of Magic Kingdom, and long before any possibility of Epcot being built. After Walt Disney's death, the company decided against building and managing an entire city, especially without Walt's guidance. However, in the late 1970s, Magic Kingdom was proven a success and plans for a second theme park began. The Epcot concept would be revised and tweaked. Instead of a functioning city of the future, Epcot Center would be a theme park modeled after the ideas and values of Walt's original concept, community, culture, and futurism. Epcot Center was officially announced in October 1970 with groundbreaking taking place on October 1st, 1979. When developing the park, Disney Imagineers were having a hard time deciding what the focus of Epcot should be. Some wanted the park to focus entirely on new advances in technology, while others wanted to focus on the cultures of different countries around the world. It was eventually decided the park would be split into two different areas showcasing boat ideas to become Future World and World Showcase. In Future World, each pavilion would focus on a theme or topic within science and industry. The pavilions would represent oceans, ecosystems and nutrition, creativity, transportation, energy, innovation, and communication. There would be one pavilion that would combine all these themes together, one that would represent the original concept Walt Disney had for Epcot, Horizons. Not part of the original lineup of pavilions that opened with the park, Horizons was built from the ground up with the support of a specific sponsor, General Electric, whose relationship with Walt Disney dates all the way back to the 1964 World's Fair, with their sponsorship of the Carousel of Progress, agreed to sponsor the new pavilion. For those who don't know how a sponsorship works, 
Disney would secure corporate sponsorships for each pavilion, guaranteeing financial support and updates throughout the sponsor's contract. This meant Disney would oversee the design and installation of the attractions within each pavilion while the bill was passed on to its sponsor. In exchange, the sponsor could advertise their name and logo throughout the pavilion, and also have a say into what went into the attraction itself. The original concept for the ride, developed by GE CEO at the time Reginald Jones, and his eventual successor Jack Walsh, was planned to focus on Thomas Edison and his body of work along with the origin of General Electric. This concept would later be changed to focus on the future of America before expanding to the future of the entire world and how families are living in the 21st century, dropping the connection to Edison entirely. The concept of the attraction was not the only thing to change over its lifespan, as the original namesake for the pavilion was Century 3, a pavilion to showcase the possibilities of what America could achieve in its third century. The name was considered too cryptic for international guests, and the name briefly changed to Future Pro. The medical connotation discouraged its use, and GE and Disney would eventually settle on Horizons. Construction on Horizons began in January of 1982. Even before the construction started, the budget for the attraction was cut by $10 million, reducing the size of the building and the length of the ride by 35%. The building would still be large in size, however, with 137,000 square feet of space between two floors. The building was designed to resemble a spaceship, while emphasizing the third dimension and giving the impression of an infinite horizon. The ride system would be an omni-mover, just like the one used in the Haunted Mansion, but was suspended from the ceiling, similar to Peter Pan's flight. The ride would incorporate two omnisphere screens. Originally slated to be the finale with three screens, it was altered to be the centerpiece with only two. The finale of the attraction was extremely unique, as guests would be able to choose their own ending. Guests in their omni-mover would push one of three buttons to select their choice, and would experience a unique 31-second video sequence. The video showed a simulated flight over of a scene related to the story. To create this effect, scale models were built and a camera swept across the model, just like in Star Tours and Back to the Future of the Ride. It took 30 model makers over a year to build each model and shoot each of the three segments. At a cost of $60 million, Horizons would officially open on October 1st, 1983, the one-year anniversary of Epcot's grand opening. Step into the future in Epcot Center's newest adventure. Step into the future in Horizons. Step into the future today. Located in the Future World section of the park, guests first enter the Future Port, the transportation hub of tomorrow. In the future port, there are posters of the ride's destinations, along with the pavilion theme song, New Horizons, being played. Guests enter their ride vehicle, a four-person omni-mover, with their final destination being a trip to the 21st century. The ride begins with looking back at tomorrow, which are scenes that examine what the future would look like from past visionaries. Guests encounter Jules Verne in his ship from his 1865 novel From the Earth to the Moon and see what an apartment in the Art Deco future of the 1930s and 1940s would look like. In the apartment, guests see a man staring out a window, a woman taking a bath while watching television, an automated machine giving an older gentleman a robotic haircut and shoe shine, and a robotic chef gone haywire and wrecking havoc in the kitchen. The ride continues into the future of the 50s. Drawing inspiration from the Jetsons, there are black-lit wire frames in the shapes of sky needle towers, neon lights, hula hoops, and even dogs with jetpacks. The Omni Mover then moves into the Omni Sphere, where guests are shown the cutting edge technology of today, including deep sea diving, decoding DNA to help advances in medical science, learning how to harness the energy of the sun, space shuttle launches, and colonies in space. The ride then enters tomorrow's windows, which give guests a tour of what life would be like in the 21st century. The tour begins in the home of the attraction's narrators, who have a strong resemblance to the family from the Carousel of Progress. Guests find the father playing a song on his synthesizer, while the mother is having a conversation with her daughter via holographic telephone. The Omni Mover passes through the couple's hydroponic garden. Riders arrive at the desert farm of Mesa Verde, where the daughter and her family live. Mesa Verde, which was once desert, has now been converted into a lush oasis with a citrus orchard tended by robotic harvesters. Helium lifters load the crops for transportation
transport to market. In this scene, orange-scented air is blown towards guests by a fragrance cannon. The next stop on tour is the daughter's Mesa Verde home, where her husband and son are trying to decorate a birthday cake. Her daughter is in the living room, speaking via video phone to her boyfriend, who's elsewhere working on repairing a submarine. As the Omnimover heads out of the living room, guests are suddenly on the other side of the conversation. Now in the undersea world of Sea Castle, guests see the boyfriend repair the sub with the narrator's granddaughter visible on the video screen nearby. The Omnimover then moves into an undersea classroom of students all dressed in wetsuits, meeting a seal for the first time. Now outside the floating city, people are seen enjoying dinner through a row of bubble-shaped windows, and the class from the class room earlier sets off in the water, diving through the kelp farms with the submerged towers of Sea Castle in the distance. The last stop on the tour is Space Station Brava Centauri. Entering the colony through a gravity-free spaceship dock, the Omnimover enters into a zero-g chamber where a family plays in the weightlessness. This scene transitions to a facility where giant crystals grow in microgravity. Finally, guests arrive at a birthday party for the narrator's grandson, appearing via holophone and the narrators and all the members of their family met when they were in Nova Site, Mesa Verde, and Sea Castle. As their tour ends, guests hear a voice. Attention Horizons passengers, you are invited to choose your own flight path back to the future port. Please look down at the lighted panels in front of you. Press one of the three ride choices, space, desert, or undersea. Everyone can choose. Majority rules. All passengers, make your selections now. Known as Choose Your Tomorrow, guests decide one of three possible destinations, Omega Centauri, Sea Castle, and Mesa Verde. Using the buttons on the front of each seat to vote, the destination with the most votes become their return route to the future port. The ride's finale takes guests on a 31-second simulator video of whatever destination has been chosen, with each destination having its own unique experience. Guests arrive back at the future port and depart the ride, passing by the prologue and the promise, a 19 by 60 foot mural by artist Robert McCall. According to McCall, the mural represented the quote, flow of civilized man from the past into the present and toward the future. The attraction was an instant hit with guests and quickly became a fan favorite due to its blending of multiple ride systems into one, impressive animatronics, engaging storytelling, fantastic soundtrack, and seamless transitions from scene to scene. Horizons is considered by many to be one of the best attractions ever created by Disney Imagineers and is a true testament to exploring innovation invention, and discovery. On September 30th, 1993, General Electric's sponsorship of Horizons expired. Even though GE decided to not renew sponsorship of the attraction, Disney would continue to keep the attraction open, removing any mentions of GE from both the ride and the show building. Without the financial backing of a sponsor to help cover the costs of maintenance and repair, the attraction began to fall into a state of decay, with animatronics and other features frequently breaking down. Attention Horizons passengers. Our travels will be briefly delayed. During this time, ideas were pitched for the pavilion to be turned into a space-themed pavilion, including a complete re-theme of the building and a brand new ride. The new ride would have placed guests in individual space harnesses while viewing space stations and space in general. This concept wouldn't get very far in development, however, as Horizons would close in December 1994. While no official reason was given to why the attraction closed, it is widely accepted that a lack of corporate sponsorship to help with the maintenance of the ride was the reason. Horizon's closure wouldn't last long, however, as the attraction surprisingly reopened in December 1995. While fans of the attraction thought the change of heart by Disney would lead to the eventual renovations and upgrades to the ride, the ride was still in the same state it was when it closed. The only reason it briefly reopened was due to both Universe of Energy and World of Motion being closed for renovations the following month. With Wonders of Life being the only attraction open on that side of the park, Park. Horizons was reopened not only to help draw guests to the area, but to also ease traffic and congestion from wonders of life. Once Test Track opened three years later, Horizons would officially close for good on January 9, 1999. For almost a year, Horizons remained unoccupied as Disney was deciding on whether or not they would construct a brand new ride inside the building or demolish it entirely and start from scratch. In April 2000, Disney announced the Horizons building would be demolished completely and in its place a brand new attraction, Mission Space, would be built. It would later be revealed by Disney Imagineer Marty Sklar that a large sinkhole formed underneath the southeast corner of the building, which most likely led to the decision to take down the building. Horizons 
would begin to be torn down in July 2000, marking the first time in Disney history that an entire ride building was demolished in preparation for a new attraction. Construction on Mission Space would begin later that year, and a new attraction would open on August 5th, 2003. When news of Horizon's closure became official, many fans who grew up with the park were very unhappy with the decision. At the time, many of the classic attractions that defined Epcot as a place of education when it first opened were being replaced by attractions that focused on characters and thrill rides in an attempt to draw people to the park. While the attraction was considered outdated at the time of its closure, the argument could be made that instead of it being replaced, Horizons could have been reimagined and updated to what theme park guests expect from rides they go on today. While Horizons may no longer be at the park, Mission Space does pay tribute to the former attraction. The center of the gravity wheel in the queue has the attraction logo, and a stylized version also appears on the front of the checkout counter in the Cargo Bay gift shop. For over 15 years, Horizons was an attraction that represented all of Epcot, taking the concepts of each future world pavilion and combining them into one beloved experience. While the attraction created a vision of what the future as seen from 1983 might have looked like, its message is still felt to this day. Horizons represented a future of promise and optimism, a future that even though each of us come from a different place, and we might have different customs, beliefs, and traditions, we all want the same thing, the promise of a better tomorrow for everyone. So that is the theme park history of Horizons. As always, thank you for watching the video and supporting the channel. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and if there's any attraction you would like us to cover in future videos, leave a comment down below. Once again, thank you for watching, and until next time, just remember, if you can dream it, you can do it.